Hi, friends. I am Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. Well, let's read what happened right after the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. And the book of Acts picks up where the Gospels end and takes us into the birth of the church, the continued ministry of the disciples, and the conversion in first years of Paul's ministry as well. This This is the book that answers the questions. So then what happened and what do we do now? So here's how it works. I'm going to read one chapter to you today. You can listen or watch on YouTube or read along in your own Bible. And then I'll maybe reflect a bit on what we read and then I'll pray. And that's it. So today is day four and I'll be reading Acts chapter four in the New Living Translation. Acts four. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus, there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them and, since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, By what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, Are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign and everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus's name again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign, the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city. For Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. 
For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. That is chapter four in Acts. Oh my gosh, there's so much my brain is thinking about and so much I'm curious about. This is the fun thing about reading a book we have never read before here on Let's Read the Gospels. But I'll tell you the thing that stands out to me is in verse 22 when it says that the miraculous sign, the healing of a man who'd been lame for more than 40 years. That means... That from before Jesus' birth, this man was unable to walk. And then through Jesus' life, death, resurrection, ascension, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and now here are Peter and John, before any of that, this man was already in need. I think that is wild. I've never seen that detail before. It is, it is just such a good reminder to me that— um, Long before we know, God has sent the answer to our prayers. Long before we ever get it, long before we see it, it is on the way. So that is a good reminder for me today. I hope it is for you too. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you were already on the way. You were on the way that this man living for decades, being in such deep need physically, that you were on the way. And so for all of our friends and all of our needs that we bring to you, thank you that your answer is already on the way, that your provision, your kindness, your healing is already on the way. And um, we are looking for it and waiting for it. And we're grateful. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.